Hi, Internet viewers. This is Frank Rauscher again. I'm going to proceed on on how to use uh, the wood burner. This is for flat artwork, but you can also use that on the birds as well and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you samples of different uh, uh, styles of pens that I use when I do the flat artwork, like uh, the one in particular that I had shown you before. This was of a bobcat's head, and I really didn't intensify this at all. I, I, I got it on here, I sketched it on. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And like I said, uh, most of the time I'm doing uh, basswood slabs like this one. This is a, with the rustic, uh, uh, and, and you could get them pretty easy. Uh, and also, um, I, I used the plywood, like a birch ply, something like this. And you could get them usually at a hardware store and it's, uh, sanded on one side, which is great. It helps you out a lot. So I'm going to show you how to prepare things to get things going when you go to do the wood burning flat work and then I'm going to show you different pens and what they do and and the units that I like okay so uh, I'm going to take you on and move the camera down and try to show you exactly what I do uh, I don't know how long this is going to take I'm going to try to give you different techniques and uh, if it does take uh, a little while I may do this in in, in two videos so uh, bear with me, and I will switch the camera down and see if this doesn't, uh, you, you, you'll see a different techniques that I use. And you saw on the, pre, uh, the video before this, uh, all the samples of things I've done, okay, both on relief and flat, okay? So uh, bear with me, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, we're back again. Uh, this is the Optima One unit that I'm talking about. It takes the cord here, and it takes these pens that plug into the cord. So I will uh, show you how that all works and stuff like that. Basically, uh, you get a cord, and it plugs into the machine, and then you get your pens and you slide these right in. And you got to make sure when you're getting a good connection that you're going all the way. These two are connected. Okay. And then I'm going to try to show you different examples of uh, the type of uh, the way I approach uh, different things with uh, the burning pens. Uh, I have what I call, this is the P12S, which is really thin. The P12 is also a good one. It's great for line work. When you're trying to do line work, uh, this is on the bird or anything else. When I'm stroking just to get lines in, this is ideal because it, it has a very small radius at the end and you can turn and really uh, just maneuver on it. So uh, like what I would do, like with the hairs coming out on, on the bobcat here, I would turn up the heat a little bit more and burn it deeper so that that stood out and showed you where it's at or where... I want to get it darker. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the tricks that I use, but I want to show you also preparation to do the flat artwork, okay? Uh, uh, I'm going to get just a small piece of uh, the birch ply. This happens to only be like a eighth of an inch. These aren't always available, but the quarter inch ones, something like this, uh, you could you could get this, and it's usually got the birch on one side, and it's really sanded and everything else. You you can get this readily, 
at most of the hardware stores, okay? But when I get it, what I do is I'll get, this is a th things I, I have sanders and I have them at 100 grit and 200 grit. This is a 300 grit is the green side and a 400 grit is the uh, yellow side. So what I'll do in preparation, I'll just go over the board and the 400 grit's really fine. So I'll just run over this. And if it's a bigger piece, it doesn't matter. You know, I could, I could come in and just do it on a bigger piece. You know, it, it's just nice. It lays flat and away you go. And they're very inexpensive, the hard shapes. So I use that a lot. So when any time you're doing uh, flat artwork uh, to get the wood prepped, I would definitely use like a, a 400 grit, something that's going to get you flat and, and it's covering the surface. And you just go around a couple of times, smooth everything out. And you don't want any dents or anything else. You want it pretty clean. So it's, it's prepped pretty good. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to show you is I showed you this one burning pen here. Uh, this is the P12S, which I really like a lot for especially line work and if I have to turn on radiuses. The other pens I like, and I'm going to show you how they all work too. This is when, uh, let me get a, a bird right here. And when I'm doing a bird and I'm doing the the patterning work for the head, you'll notice that uh, I'll come in and I'll start with like an oval or a half oval or uh, an ellipse. Uh, I, I just call them C's, <laughs> just elongated C's. And as they come back, I get longer in, in the distance apart. And you can see that here. And then when I get towards the end, when it comes down on the head, I get it shorter. So to do these properly, a spear-shaped pen like this is ideal. You could come in, and what you're doing is you're burning on the leading edge. And again, I'm going to demo this. This is just talking about it. I, uh, the spear allows you to go deep and lift as you come out, and that's how I get this in, and I do it like a, as a fan, you know, and, and that works out really great. Then I'm going to also show you how the shader works. You can get this is, is actually turned like on a 45 degree. So you can lay this flat against the wood. And I'm going to show you just by slowing it down or speeding it up, I could do it. I can get a tan color. I can get a real dark burn. It just depends on what you want. And you can never have to change the temperature. Once you got that temperature range and you got the feel for it. And a lot of times if you're doing a big piece, you have a sacrificial piece like this just to take the heat off of it. And I'll show you how to do that. But this is a this is an angled piece. This is what I they call a shader. And I recommend these if you're doing flat artwork uh, on, on, on wood. This is ideal. And then this is a great one for, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, signing your pieces and everything else. Let's see if I did it on this one. I don't know. The Wren, yes, I did. The Wren that I'm doing next uh, on the bottom of my base, I sign my name on the bottom of it, and you have to turn up the temperature a little bit. But this is a ball, and they come in different diameters, but this is the one I like the most. Uh, it's probably, uh, oh, God, it's pretty small. It's uh, probably about a two-millimeter ball, and... Uh, you, you can have a lot of fun with it. Just to show you how crazy it could get, I drew a pattern on it, just a piece of scrap wood. And, and uh, what I did is I 
I just did this while I'm talking to somebody on the phone. You can tell how, uh, what I, I need to do something all the time. So with this, I, uh, I sectioned off the wood and I did this freehand. And then uh, while I'm talking to somebody on the phone, I'm not holding the phone. I'm just, uh, into the speaker and I start just dotting these dots in with the ball and then and I'm looking at this oh well, I could put some uh, more dots in the middle here and this is what I came up with and then of course I'm going to decorate the ends and that's another thing you can do so it, it, it shows you different things that you can come up with that uh, you know I was just playing around with it now, I did another one over here with line work, and and then I just patterned, I penciled all this in. So, it, the one thing you're going to have to do, and I'm going to show you how to uh, transfer designs and stuff like that that you have. But in this case here, this is just all freelancing, uh, and I... Uh, I started in the center here. I put some patterns on and then I went out this way. Uh, uh, I forget what they call it. Uh, Zen, Zen something. I forget. Uh, it's like doodling. But what happened was I got all the, the line work in uh, just by using this pen here and coming in and just following my line work after I penciled it in and I just followed that and I had all these squares then I came in with the shader later and I came in and I just used the tip and I go in and I shade every other block and it is what came out so if you could tell when I'm bored I'll, I'll, I'll try doing anything so uh, this is one thing it, it's kind of fun and and you could do things like this easy if you were uh, I, I do gourds where I'll go in and and put a, a pattern on a gourd and then go in and burn. You could do that too. I also have, uh, I don't know if I have it on the table here or not. Oops, excuse me. Uh, they have uh, basswood plates that you could get. And uh, again, you could put a pattern on there or a face or something like that and, and then transpose it on there and then start wood burning it in and you, you can paint them or you can just leave them natural like I did with uh, the bobcat's head here and and didn't really do any painting at all but I've, I've painted them too as you saw on previous uh, video so uh, there's a lot of things you can do this on and, and uh, plates are kind of neat to, to get into as well. So let me start you out by, besides preparing the surface, like I did with this one and using the 400 grit sand, sandpaper, I just rub that out. And the nice part about these two is you can wash them and uh, reuse them again and, and, and go, and they go. And uh, like I said, they come in uh, red and I think it's red and blue and, and green and yellow. And they're all different grits. But the, the finest one is the yellow and that's what I use it for. So you prepare your wood first by getting it real nice and smooth. Now, I'm going to show you some of the tricks on how I transfer over 